Hello everyone, welcome back to another session in Dentistry and more. Today's topic in periodontics is bone grafts. So bone grafts uh, are nothing but materials which is used for replacement or augmentation of the bone. So it is a procedure used to replace or restore the missing bone or gum tissues. So this session is about the biologic mechanisms involved in grafting and various types of graft. So let's get into the details of bone grafts. So grafting is nothing but implanting a healthy tissue from the donor site to the recipient site. So here the defect is present. So we keep a healthy tissue to the new recipient site so that it is restored, repaired and regenerated. So what are the rationale of this process? Because this process will enhance the regenerative capacity of the bone and it will achieve new attachment apparatus okay so these are the rationale of this grafting and basically we have three biologic mechanism which is happening in grafting the first one is osteoconduction then osteoinduction and osteogenesis so this is the process how the newborn forms at the recipient site so you can see all is having osteo that is a bone so one bone formation via conduction second via induction and this is a natural process genesis okay so what is exactly osteo conduction so osteo conduction okay it is a formation of bone by osteoblast from the margins of the defect on the bone graft material okay so this is a graft material okay so this is a graft material we are implanted this is a recipient site okay this is a recipient site and this is a graft material we just remove this so this is the from donor side we implanted a graft here so osteoconduction means formation of bone by osteoblast from the margins of the defects on the bone graft material okay so this is a margin okay this is a margin okay so there will be osteoblast here so it serves as scaffold for bone growth it does not inhibit nor induce bone formation okay no inhibition no induction so what happens is it facilitates bone formation by bridging the gap okay so bridging the gap so there is a gap here that is between defect and the new graft which is implanted so there is no inhibition there is no induction just facilitating the scaffold just facilitating to close the gap between the newly kept graft and the defect margins so it simply allows the normal formation of bone by osteoblast into the graft defect along the surface of graft material so this is a surface of graft material so along the surface of graft material there will be bone formation and bridging the gap so this is osteoconduction okay so whereas osteoinduction is it involves new bone formation via stimulation of osteoprogenitus from the defect okay that is means uh, from the vasculature then it differentiates into osteoblast and begin uh, forming of new bone. 
so here the bone formation is induced okay it is induced with the help of some inactive material such as bone morphogenic proteins okay so these inductions of bone forming process by cells that would otherwise remain inactive so these bone morphogenic proteins induce bone formation in osteoconduction there was no induction it was just facilitating here the induction that is the osteoprogenitors are stimulated via uh, the new defect that is from vasculature to differentiate into osteoblasts with the help of bone morphogenic proteins whereas osteogenesis is the normal process of bone formation it occurs when living osteoblasts are part of the bone graft so there is already present osteoblast within the graft so when there is adequate blood supply and cellular viability these transplanted osteoblast from the new centers of ossification within the graft starts forming bone and it creates the new bone okay so because this osteoblast uh, already exists and added as a part of the bone graft from ossification centers which contributes to the total capacity for bone formation so these are the basic difference in osteo induction it is induced by bmp it act as a scaffold and close the gap this is the cells are present within the that is osteoblast is present within the graft here the inert material like bmp induce bone formation that is the difference between these three mechanism okay and now let's move on to the types of graft so we have uh, the autograft uh, that is uh, intraoral and extraoral type another one is allograft which is taken from the same species xenograft from the different species alloplast or synthetic graft so autograft is nothing but uh, taken from the same person okay could be an intraoral tissue or an extraoral tissue so intraoral sites we can use healing of extraction site edentulous ridge uh, the bony growth such as exostosis maxillary tuberosity the chin uh, and the bone which is removed during osteoplasty and ostectomy so all these can be used as a graft they are the intraoral uh, intraoral sites from which we can uh, take up the graft and also we have extra oral uh, sites from which we can take the uh, the graft for uh, implantation so they are uh, iliac crest ribs uh, tibial metaphysis even cranium all those can be used as a extra oral sites for graft okay now we have the second category that is allograft or allogenic bone graft which is taken from the same species so four types of allografts are available one is frozen cancellous iliac bone marrow and the second one is cryo preserved bone from the head of a femur then fdba fdba that is nothing but freeze dried bone allograft and the next one is d fdba which is demineralized freeze dried bone allograft so these are the four types of allograft so the only material with human histological evidence to substantiate the regenerative use are autogenous bone graft and this dfdba okay so these are the two materials which can uh, uh, induce the regeneration of bone and also it is important to understand the screening protocol of tissue bank Uh, that is procuring and processing the graft in donor selection processing technique and particle size 
the third one is xenograft xenograft is different species okay such as uh, calf bone keel bone and an organic bone so these materials have been uh, discarded uh, for various reasons uh, that is xenograft the last one is alloplast or synthetic uh, bone grafts so a number of synthetic or inorgan inorganic graft materials are available uh, for use in the treatment so they act almost exclusively as biologic fillers with uh, this bone fill and very limited connective tissue regeneration and the last one is alloplast or synthetic bone graft so a number of synthetic or inorganic graft materials are available for the use in the treatment so they act almost exclusively as biological fillers with very limited connective tissue regeneration they can be classified by their ability to be bioabsorbed such as absorbable material or non absorbable material so absorbable materials are uh, ceramics hydroxyapatite calcium sulfate and calcium carbonate uh, or beta tricalcium phosphate and non absorbable are uh, porous hydroxyapatite uh, or bioactive glass so this bone graft materials help maintain space to facilitate the formation of bone within a confined space so they should facilitate the growth of uh, neovascularization and migration of osteoprogenitors and the size of bone graft particles determine the resultant space available for osseous formation okay so the typical size of bone graft particles ranges from 100 2000 micrometer which is conductive to the ingrowth of bone so what are the basic requirements for bone regeneration uh, there should be blood supply adequate blood supply there should be proper stabilization and the presence of osteoblast and the space should be confined there should be space maintenance and the proper wound coverage so all grafting techniques require pre-surgical scaling occlusal adjustment and uh, the exposure of the defect correction of exposure of the defect using a full thickness flap and the flap technique best suited for grafting purpose is a papillar preservation flap because it provides complete coverage of the interdental area after suturing okay so the graft purpose is suited with papilla preservation flap whereas the occlusal adjustment and the exposure of the defect is done with a full thickness flap so the fate of bone graft is uh, different once a material is placed in the bony defect it may act in a number of ways which may decide the fate of this material so it could be such as bone graft material may have no effect at all or the bone graft material may act as a scaffolding material for the host site to lay the new bone or the bone graft material may itself deposit new bone because of its own viability so anything can happen so that's all for now so we discussed in detail about the biologic mechanisms such as osteoconduction, induction and osteogenesis and various types of graft, autograft, allograft, xenograft and alloplast or synthetic graft. So all are very very important for the exam. So each one can be asked as a short note or this entire thing could be asked as a short essay. So I'll come up with a new topic in the industry and more. Thank you. And lastly guys, we have started channel membership in the industry and more channel. So you can explore a various uh, exclusive perks for the channel members. So you can explore various options by clicking on the join button adjacent to subscribe button. 
so we have options of uh, personal whatsapp uh, help so you can ask any doubts uh, you will get answered through whatsapp uh, text messages or uh, voice messages and we have one more option that is uh, the pdf notes will be available but as of now we have only the public health dentistry topic the more topics will be uploaded soon and the last option is one to one interaction session you will get the personal interaction or personal classes on uh, various subjects from the faculties of respective branches so explore the join button and let us know if you want any further help from us thank you